Welcome back to my channel, ladies and gents. Sit back, relax, and listen to 60 minutes of true camping, scary horror stories to fall asleep to. Also, make sure to like and comment so I know you see this and subscribe. I'm halfway to 1,000 subscribers. Help me reach my goal. That would greatly be appreciated. I was camping in a valley by myself with no cell service. I stayed late on a trail and ran into a nice local dude as it was getting dark. He showed me a local camping spot close to the road and the river, but camouflaged. I had a fire, drank beer, and listened to my friend's comedy podcast. I was loud and visible. Because it was dark already, I decided to sleep in the back of my truck under my topper next to all of my gear as opposed to setting up my tent. The next morning I made a fire, cracked a beer, and started making breakfast. Then I noticed that there is a man at the edge of my camp. He comes closer, but never looks directly at me. This dude looks homeless, has a long ratty beard, and has at least a hundred plastic grocery bags tied all over his clothes. I comment about how nice the day is. No response from him. I offer him breakfast. Nothing. He sort of paces around the perimeter of my camp. I offer him a beer. But he just turns around. The dude is just standing there back to me, wandering around. I'm realizing that there isn't going to be any good happenings. I had my bear spray and buck knife super close. I give him an ultimatum. Motherfucker, you are either going to acknowledge me or leave immediately. He ignores me. I grab the bear mace and walk a few steps towards him. He sulked away, and I threw my shit in my truck and left that place right quick. I wonder if he had watched me during the night, and I thank my laziness for staying in my truck instead of a tent. Story 2 Went on a group camping trip in the middle of nowhere Arizona, only to awake and hear something sniffing the outside of our tent. My immediate reaction was that it was likely a bear or some animal that came across our site, and just maybe my dumbass friends didn't tie up the garbage. Seconds later, I can hear the sniffing go to the tent next to ours, and everyone in mine grabs one another quietly to acknowledge we all were awake and were aware of what's happening outside. Moments later, a friend in another tent popped out and started to scream and make noise. He had a gun too, hoping it would scare off whatever animal was in our sight. Turns out it wasn't an animal. It was some guy who had gone through our coolers, food, and also decided it'd be okay to sniff our tents. Our friend chased him off, and we immediately packed our shit and left. Edit. Alright, since this is floating at the top, I thought I'd a second creepy camping story. A year after the above incident, my dumbass friends and I went back to the nearby area, thinking what we encountered was a one-time incident. This time, we thought we'd outsmart any possible creepers, and instead of camping in our tents, we all slept in the beds of our trucks and SUVs. Cause you know, they can't possibly sniff a Toyota Tacoma? Anyways, it's the middle of the night, I'm passed out in the back of my SUV when I suddenly feel a bright light on my face. Naturally, I would have woken up, cussed, and asked who was doing that. However, I instantly knew to pretend to be asleep and not let the individual know I was awake. I laid there next to my girlfriend, hoping she would do the same as I, and I kept an ear out for any unusual sounds, like sniffing. All I could hear was a friend snoring by the campfire. After the light left my car, I heard the person walk to the next truck and shine his light on my friends in there. I slowly looked up, and it ended up being some older guy just standing there staring at everyone while they slept. I waited until he left the campsite, and I busted my ass out of that truck and woke up my friends, most of which had also been pretending to sleep and realized what was going on. Till dot dar. Don't camp outside of Tucson, Arizona, unless you want a hill have eyes. Creature sniffing and staring at you while you sleep. Story 3. I tend to get a late start when I head out into the woods, and so I'm usually setting up camp well after dark and don't really get to see my surroundings until the next morning. One morning I woke up before dawn to the sound of something large and heavy being dragged past my tent. I remember laying there in horror, telling myself, okay, it's going to be fine, 
you're going to go back to sleep. And when it's light out, you're going to laugh at this because, oh my God, it's definitely a body. There's a murderer dragging a body and him next. Eventually, I managed to exhaust myself out of sheer terror and fell back asleep. Woke up in the daylight, relieved to be alive, looked out and discovered I had set up my tent on a small overlook directly below a beaver dam. I was right beside their log chute. Story 3 I don't think you can camp on Assateague and not come away with a fun, or awful, horse story. We camped there for a few days a couple summers ago and didn't see any of them all day. That evening was cloudy and moonless, and nothing was visible outside the light of our campfire. Out of nowhere, my fiancé stands up and points to my right with a startled, holy shit. A horse had very silently rolled up to our spot, searching about for easy food. The size of it, coupled with its stealthy approach, was a bit unnerving. The next morning, some careless person had gone off somewhere and left their tent door open. A horse had invited himself in and was industriously tossing containers and bags about. Some feminine screaming followed shortly after. He was eventually ejected with great commotion. I've yet to have a run-in with a bear while camping, but I can state that the horses on Assateague have nary a damn to give. Story 4 My sister lives on the outskirts of Creswell, Oregon, on a large piece of property that edges a hillside. They have cougar out there, and one day she was out gardening, and her little dog was running around. She was pulling weeds, bent over, when she heard her dog start barking. He was a Jack Russell mix, so that was normal. But then she heard him scream, a god-awful key yipe that cut off midway. She went to investigate and couldn't find him. She walked the wild side of her property, still nothing. She was upset and was heading back to get her husband to help when she caught sight of a big cougar watching her. She told me later she screamed, You killed my dog, at it, and it just walked away with her dead dog, cool as a cucumber. Mountain lions are scary. Story 5 I was hiking in empty Charleston about a year or two back now. We had three people with us and just left the restaurant so we had leftovers in the car. I parked at the very top by the helicopter lift where the ski resort is to walk out on the trail and stargaze. It was a fairly clear night and the sun had just started to set. So we walked maybe 10 minutes on the trail itself before finding a good spot with a clearing to break off and go relax while we let the sun disappear. We take use of this time to start rolling up so I focus most of my attention on this. It doesn't take but five minutes before the feeling of being watched sets in. We are perched up so we can see the trail, and then all of a sudden I see something quickly scurry down the trail in front of us. Instantly, my friend asks if anybody else saw it so it got both of us on our feet. We describe what we each saw and can only conclude to it being a mountain lion with the size and movement. We quickly pack up and we each are grabbing rocks and sticks in the event we need them. We work our way back down the trail and head back for the car. As we are walking, we are staying alert, and one of us will keep stating we can see yellow eyes as we keep looking. This raises the tension, but we all have to keep moving. After a few minutes of this, we finally approach the opening of the trail where I parked. This is where we confirm our initial thought as the car is sitting next to my car just looking at us. So we start throwing rocks near my car. Dumb at the time, but the car was the safe spot. Luckily, this startles him enough to move away, and we wait a minute to see that he is actually gone. After not seeing him, we decide to reload our hands and work towards the car. We inch our way closer and closer, still not seeing him. I get to the car and unlock it to ensure we safely make it in. After we all get in, we look back to the trail as we drive off, and sure enough, in the exact place we were standing was the mountain lion, just looking at us as we drove away. Get chills thinking about this every time. Story 6. Camping one night and a couple friends and I were chilling by this little pond. We heard some rustling on the other side of the pond, 45 yards or so, 
So I shine the flashlight and there is a glow in the dark mask from the movie screen. As soon as the light hit the mask, they turned and slowly walked back into the woods. Scared the shit out of me until we figured out it was one of our buddies who snuck out of his tent to play a prank on us. It was probably the most scared I've ever been in my life. Story 7 I was stargazing with my soon-to-be wife in a large park one night when we heard some coyotes chattering. It was a large park, but we were in the city, so we didn't think anything of it. Soon after that, we packed it up and started walking back to the car. It was through a fairly large wooded area on a dark trail. I had a little flashlight I was using, and as we got to the turn for the parking lot, I moved the flashlight through the trees. About eight pairs of eyes reflected my flashlight back at me from way too close for comfort. Scared the crap out of us. My soon-to-be wife said, what do we do? I said, just keep walking, nothing we can do. I had my finger on the car's panic button in case they got frisky, but I'll never forget those eyes lighting up like that. Story 8 Growing up, I had an outdoor cat that loved to wander the nearby woods at night. He thought he was king of the forest, and quickly realized that he could outrun the foxes and that they couldn't climb. This emboldened him, and he would toy with them, get them to chase, then run back to the house and up to the top of our second story deck where he would taunt them. I was up late one night when he was doing this, and the foxes decided to start screaming at him. I've never been more scared in my life. I thought a woman was being brutally murdered in my backyard. I quickly ran to my parents' bedroom and woke them up only to for my dad to roll over and say, it's only foxes, and then go right back to sleep. Story 9. My wife and I, with our dog, Husky Aussie Mix, had a similar experience. It was 2016 in Colorado, doing some pretty backwoods camping. About one two-hour back through some four or four trails, we found a pretty secluded spot, or so we thought. A car that I couldn't believe made it past the first half-mile drives by some time in the afternoon. Immediately, my pup just drops low and stares it down, hair raised and growling to alert me. At first, I was confused because she only does this when people approach unannounced to our campsite. As soon as I greet them or acknowledge, she breaks from the stance. So I tell her safe, yet she won't break away, but I continue on setting camp. So the day goes by, camp's been set, fire is roaring. Wife is cooking up some tin foil chicken, and we are relaxing. My pup laying calmly starts a growl again, just slight enough I can hear it. Wife becomes uneasy, and the hair on my neck is raising. I don't shrug this one off by any means. Not thinking it's anyone, I assume it's wildlife. I grab my 1000 lumens Duracell flashlight, highly recommended BTW, with this light, you can focus the beam like a laser and start to cycle the surroundings. Something shinny about 75 yard. Put a shine back. I flashed back at it and it went away. Thinking, oh, totally an animal. Eyes shine in the dark. Go back to relaxing, still uneasy. In the tent, to a saw with slight rain, our pup starts the most intense and vicious growl, like red alert. I give my wife our 10 gauge shotgun and I grab my 45 and leash up my dog. I settle her only to hear two voices within 15 yards of the tent. I go out the back and get against the truck. Dog still in tent with wife. The moon was just bright enough to see things a little and I yell, announce yourself, no response. I repeat, this is an armed campsite. Announce yourself immediately. Flashlight in one had 45 in other. I look over the hood to see someone standing at the edge of the camp. Wife asks, what's going on? And they start walking around, not sure where the other voice went. Dog's hair is raised and barking behind the tent. I move back to it and see that someone's been standing there and they moved across the campsite. At this point, I saw them move into the woods. I have her and the pup get in the truck for the rest of the night, and I stay awake, on watch. Nothing else came of it. 
The next morning, I found a spot a little outside the clearing with two dead rabbits gutted and pinned against the tree with nails. Below it was human shit and a kitchen knife. I've camped that area plenary of times and never seen anything like this. So why I tell my friends, I don't carry in the woods for the animals. I carry for the crazies. Story 10. This. I've been this person except while hunting. Background. I'm a girl. Well, a woman now. And we would go deer hunting up in the bluffs of a family friend. I was the only girl, most times other than Jima Hilda, who was like 80, even 15 years ago. And she put most of us to shame every season anyhow. Anyways, my dad would always walk me to my stand. Since I wasn't familiar with the area, I'm a big chicken. And the corn-fed farm boy who originally placed the footings is like six and a half FD tall. So I often need a boost to start climbing the tree. Well, Dad kept saying this is the darkest I've seen it as we hiked. I get settled, and it is still an hour before dawn since my dad had to hike back up to the truck and drive to his area and hike down to his stand. As soon as my dad radios that he is at the truck, I notice a rustling periodically that I now know can't be my dad. I've got 45 minutes until first light, and I keep hearing something below my tree periodically. I am radioing my dad, nonstop convinced an animal or inbred cannibal is going to get me and carry off my 14-year-old self for breakfast. By the time the animal cries out, I am sobbing in the woods on the radio. My dad finally loses patience with me and whisper yells, You have a gun. You are fine. Turns out a bobcat was checking out my location. Also turns out that when I hiked back out at lunch and went to the farmhouse. Everyone in our group looked at me, then cracked a smile while one of my dad's friends quotes my sobbing pleas from the morning. Then they died laughing, while I realized the channel was not just me and dear old dad. It was me, dad, his buddy, buddy's old old parents, buddy's HS age sons, buddy's brother, two or three more of dad's friends and another HS boy. Story 11. Went to Guatemala with my GF, did a three-day hike through the jungle to Tikal, slept in a tent at two tiny ranger campsites deep in the woods. During the second night, a massive thunderstorm was coming down above Eus. At 4 a.m., I woke up and heard some male voices and left the tent to check them out. Two guys with rifles approached me, told my GF to stay in the tent because, scary, she didn't comply and joined me. Turns out those guys were local hunters looking for shelter in the camp. Offered them coffee. They were more than happy. About 30 seconds later, the storm got so intense that a big-ass tree fell and crashed onto our tent. If I had not left to check out the guys, or worse, my GF would have listened. We'd both be very dead now. Story 12 Pigs are one of three mammals indigenous to the U.S. that I have a respectable fear of. I was living in a cabin just outside of Volcanoes National Park when I was 20. I walked out to pee one night. I had been drinking. Around 2 or 3 a.m., I let loose on the ginger, which stands 6 to 7 tall, and you need a machete to walk through. Staring up at the stars and reviling in the moment of silence and beauty, I was calm and content, until I heard it a snort from about five to my right and about waist height. The sound could only be produced by something considerably larger than myself. I freeze midstream with my unit in one hand and machete in the other. Then a crash from my right to where I was just peeing. The ginger went flat to the ground in an instant. When it got light, I went back to investigate. Sure enough, a three-path of broken ginger went off towards the park. I am certain that if that pig's trajectory had been a few degrees different, I would not be telling this story. Even as a cocky post-teen who was invincible, I knew I was three to four from certain death. Story 13. I live in a rural town surrounded by mountains and forests. So camping is almost a weekly event, even in winter. The one I can't shake is when me and a friend broke off from our group of other 
16, 19 year olds to camp by a better fishing spot about a mile away. We only brought one tent for the group, so we built a lean-to against a large boulder in a clearing. I couldn't sleep because I had the feeling something was watching us. I assumed it was a mountain lion, which isn't that big of a deal considering their behavior, so I threw some more logs on the fire. I looked up from the fire, and under the light of a full moon, there was a man standing at the edge of the clearing about 80 yards away. I was frozen and couldn't take my eyes off him while he assumedly stared back. He walked off in the opposite direction after about a minute or two. I doubt he had any ill intentions, but I sat there holding my friend's 357 the whole night. Edit. I didn't wave or call out because I was terrified. I was frozen since I was 16 and inexperienced. Nowadays, I would call out and see what's going on. Also, mountain lions aren't a concern. I've been stalked by them and have stumbled face to face with a few. They aren't a big issue or fear if you understand them. Story 14. My family went camping every summer when I was growing up. We usually bounced between Virginia Beach, Assateague, and this god-awful place called Westmoreland. One trip we were in Assateague, near the beach, and we had two tents set up in different parts of the site. Sometime in the middle of the night, my mom woke up, which woke me. She was sitting up straight, but completely still, and I looked over at what she was staring at. In the moonlight, there was the silhouette of what looked like an old woman looking into our tent. Long, wiry hair and everything. I was young, so it terrified me, and I started asking my mom what that was, who was outside. Once I made noise, it spooked the old woman, and she took off. And that's when we realized she was actually one of the feral ponies that live on the island. We had set up that particular tent on one of their trails, and they were going down to the beach. Story 15 I don't do the tent thing so much anymore. I've got a piece of property about 60 miles south of the Mackinac Bridge, dead south, in Michigan's Lower Peninsula. I built a 12x16 cabin, completely off-grid, basically a big wooden tent, on top of a very tall hill. I'm the highest point for a few miles. The camp next to me, a ranch house that some city people bought, has a family group that uses it, good peeps. We have bueno fun during deer season. The old guy that actually owns the place is a Bigfoot guy. He swears up and down that we have a freaking Bigfoot running around. I 100% do not subscribe to Bigfoot. So, one night about 1 a.m., I decide to turn in. I am completely shitfaced. I'm running on a case of beer. I crawl up in the loft to go to sleep. Windows open. I can hear deer poking around. I'm just about to go sleepy sleep, and something fin bams into the SW corner of the cabin. Hard. Made the building move seriously. Freaked me out. But, as aforementioned, I was shot fey eyed I fell asleep. However, I remembered it in the AM when I got up. I went outside, and about nine from the ground on the SW corner was a big muddy blotch on the wall. Now, I'm not telling Bigfoot guy neighbor, no way. But, WTF? I've told myself over and over that an owl smacked the side of the cabin chasing a vole or something but that muddy blotch looked an awful lot like a big old handprint. Story 15, Central New Mexico, 1991 or 1992, Memorial Day weekend. Family camping trip, my parents, me, my younger sister, and our dog. We go to bed the second night, all of us in the bedroom of the two-room tent, only to wake up a few hours later to the dog wanting out. Okay. Dad lets the dog out and sits in the screened-in dining room part of the tent. Dog comes snuffling back in, goes over to his empty food dish and noses around in it. Dad reaches down to scratch his ears and bring him back into the bedroom with him. Not the dog, bear cub. Mama's right outside. Dad manages to get the cub out of the tent and it and mom go. Dog comes back. Dad apparently sits up the rest of the night with the rifle. Story 16. Yep, lots of back bears in NM. One night, 
I let the dogs out to potty and heard them barking their heads off. I went out to get them thinking they're barking at elk or deer, shine my flashlight, and five feet from me was Mama Bear just looking at the fool dogs and now at me. Behind her was a cub. For some reason, I wasn't scared, just wanted to get the dogs away from her so they wouldn't get hurt. I've also charged cow and even a bull elk who were charging these same fool dogs, barking their heads off at these animals that are 10x bigger than they are. The elk always back off. But if anything happens to me, it will be my fool dog's fault. Story 17. My husband and I went camping on an island you have to access by boat kayak in the ocean. We looked at the tide times and planned to go paddling and then come back for our gear and go to the camping spot. We misjudged the times and got stuck out with none of our camping gear. The sun was setting and my husband was like, we can make it. And we paddled so hard and it just got dark. So fast. I remember sitting there in the boat listening to the ocean waves and just thinking that this was it for us. I turned on the flashlight and saw nothing but darkness out in front of me. I started whimpering and my husband was like, honey, please be quiet, like please. It was surreal. We were so disoriented. I honestly don't remember how we made it back to the shore of the island. We found a dune and turned our kayak on its side and got underneath it. We laid there in silence all night getting eaten by bugs. The second the water changed for us, we caught it back to the other side. The funny thing was, we've done that trip before and since the incident as well, flawlessly. But that one little fluky decision was so scary. Story 18. Winter camping in about 15 degree weather and it's night. It was so cold that our water froze within an hour or two of being at the campsite and we had seen nobody at all at any of the other campsites. At about 7 p.m. at night, a pickup truck pulls into our campsite and turns off its lights and motor and nobody gets out. It's dark and we can't see in the pickup truck, but we try to see inside of it without being too intrusive. So we left our campsite and went to find cell reception to call somebody and give them the license plate number because we had no idea what this person's intention was it just sits there for two hours, and at 9 p.m., it starts up and drives off. Story 19. I do archaeological research work way out in the desert in Namibia. Nothing but our team and massives and dunes for 100 kilometers M in any direction. It never really rains and the stars are beautiful, so I sleep out without a tent most nights in the field. One night we grilled some meat over the fire for dinner and went to bed. We're usually extremely careful about packing up any food waste in the truck or burning it. But unbeknownst to us at the time, we spilled just a tiny splash of the meat juice on the hood. I was the last one awake, read for a bit, climbed into my bag next to the truck and closed my eyes. Heard the slightest little rustle. Turned on my light, nothing out there. Turned it back off. Then not even really a sound, but just a sense of something moving close by. I'm staring out there into the dark. Two eyes flash for a moment, then two more, then two more. Sit up, turn on my light, and it's at least five, ten jackals two meters away, surrounding me in a semicircle with the truck to my back. One jackal isn't too scary, but a hungry pack of them creeping up on you in the dark is terrifying. I yelled and threw sand at them, made for my buddy's tent, got inside, could hear them for the next two hours or so, rummaging through everything on our campsite before I finally went to sleep. Story 20. There were two things that really freaked me out. One was on a school camping trip. I went to a charter school on a nature reserve and we went on two, three trips a year. One time we stayed at a Boy Scouts camp that had actual cabins. Nothing fancy, just four walls with a plastic roof. Each cabin had four or five wooden beds that you just put your sleeping bag on. There were also two windows on the left and right sides of the cabin and one on the back. Well, nighttime rolled around and we all had to go to bed. The other cabins went quiet pretty quickly, but everyone in my cabin was struggling to sleep. Probably an hour went by before shit got scary. 
One of the people in my cabin screamed. Naturally, we all bolted up just in time to see someone duck down under the window over them before trying to run off. He didn't get very far. One of the teachers ran out of their cabin and caught him. It was another student. Apparently, he was obsessed with the girl he was watching. Needless to say, he was immediately expelled and sent home. The rest of the trip went just fine. Now, this other story is definitely scarier, but I actually don't have a ton of information on it. Basically, all I really know is that I ended up inadvertently camping in the same woods as an escaped murderer who was found only about a mile from me. The only reason I learned about it was a cop asked me if I had seen anyone suspicious when I was out there. I had not. For some reason, this was never reported on. When I try to look it up, it's like it never happened. It makes me question my sanity sometimes. All I know is a guy escaped from the prison a few miles outside of my town and was in the same woods as I was that night. Story 21 We had all four of us been looking forward to this trip for months. Santa Cruz Island, off the coast of California. Four nights, seclusion, tiny foxes. We order gear, we order flights, we arrange transport to the island, T transport to, to the transport. We have to bring water as there is none, so packs are heavy. We board the ferry, it is a beautiful sunny day. The boat is cruising through dolphin pods, and the island appears in the distance. It is amazing. We drop off some kayakers at one end, and move on to the campers and hikers port. We get there, unload, it is hot and dry. No water makes the packs feel 2x as heavy as normal. We slug uphill and over hill and around hill, and we finally get to the site and there are little foxes running everywhere. We set up settle and coffee on and go to roll a joint. The weed is in the car. Story 22. A little late to the party, but wanted to share anyway. I went camping last year. It was a group of six of us, but we were sleeping in tents of two. It was a gorgeous campsite deep in the woods with no other sites nearby. Throughout the day, we saw a black bear, heard some coyotes, countless birds, and there had been a moose spotted only a couple miles away, so lots of life and noises around. We had a great day, and one by one, all went to our tents at night. I have no idea what time it was, but I woke up out of my sleep for an unknown reason. The woods were dead quiet. I didn't even hear a bug. I was sketched out after it being so loud all day, but decided to try and sleep it off because I figured it was just my anxiety overthinking. Out of nowhere, something heavy slammed into the back of the tent. Really quick, it hit me and left a bruise. So I know I didn't imagine it. I never heard anything walk to or from the tent. And I was silently crying, thinking I was about to be killed. After what felt like an eternity of trying to stay quiet, the tiredness took over, and I had the worst sleep of my life. In the morning, I was the first one awake, so when I got up, I went to the back of the tent to look around. No tracks or anything of any kind. Nothing at the camp had been disturbed. I told everyone about it when they got up, but no one had heard or experienced anything. I'm sure there's a logical explanation to what it was, but in that moment, my heart was about to explode. Story 23, Northern Minnesota Iron Range Country. A buddy and I are off a logging road about one two mile in the woods, scouting areas to set up deer stands just before dark. And we walk up a pretty good rise and stop for a minute. We start noticing all these bleached out bones scattered across the side of this hill. We're on, then start noticing piles of sand peppered around the same area and realize we're standing in the middle of wolf dens. We decided pretty quickly, maybe let's move on, and as soon as we started out, a massive owl swooped out of a tree above us. Whole thing was surreal. Story 24. When you was 10, my family decided to host a camping trip for my birthday. A few of my friends were there, but it was a small group. The second day there, my now ex-friend, her brother, her brother's friend, and I decided to go biking with my dad. One of the clips on his pedal broke away into the ride, so he stopped to fix it and told us to keep riding since we knew the trail. We went at a slow pace so he could catch up to us. 
but as soon as he fixed the pedal, he started ride fast, probably thinking we had gone farther ahead. He rode past us on accident without recognizing us and went through a fork in the path. When we got to the fork, we had no idea which way he went, and so we chose at random. We quickly realized we guessed wrong and stopped at a creek. Me and my friend stupidly decided to leave her brother and his friend, the youngest in the group, at the creek with all the bikes. Me and her walked back to the fork and called for my dad. We walked all the way back to camp, scared and hungry. When we got back, our parents said my dad came back, said we were missing and already went back out to search. We finally found him and walked back to where the bikes and younger kids were. He screamed at me and my friend the whole way back to camp saying how stupid we were for leaving the little kids alone. He was right and saying it was somehow our fault that he rode ahead of us, Lomeo. Looking back on it, it was funny and stupid but I was scared of biking for a good long while after that. Story 25. When I was a kid, we used to go on camping trips in the summer with my parents' caravan. One year, my sister and I decided that we wanted to sleep in a small tent instead, which was set up directly in front of the caravan. We didn't even make it one night. Every now and then, the both of us clearly heard the sound of something rubbing against the tent. We were scared shitless because we thought someone was walking around our tent. I don't remember how we got out of the tent. I guess we started screaming for our parents at one point or something. My father took a look around and we tried again, but after a while, heard the same sounds again. We ended up sleeping in the caravan anyway. A few days later, we still didn't want to sleep in the tent, so my father started to disassemble it. Turns out, some animals built tunnels directly under the tent, and in doing so, rubbed against the bottom wall. We didn't notice anything, because we were lying on inflatable mattresses. We only heard the sound of them, rubbing against the wall. It's pretty funny now, but damn were we creeped out at the time. Story 26 My girlfriend at the time and I went camping five hours away from home for her birthday, our anniversary. We made the trip the day after a big storm passed through. We left town early and got there in the early afternoon. The guy at the entrance to the campgrounds mentioned there was no one else staying there that weekend. We were like, oh, this is going to be sick. First, we drove down these long pathways to our designated area. As you got closer to it, the road narrowed. So basically, you had to back out to get out. We unloaded the car, got the tent set up, and decided to go walk around the woods. It was dead silent. But it was still bright out, so we just took in all the nature we could and walked a few miles away. We reached this point in the woods where there were some weird-looking white cabins. They were very uniform, all built the exact same way. Like, I guess they were a part of the camping grounds, but they seemed way out of the way, and there was no sign of life. It felt eerie to be at, like we shouldn't be there. So we turned around and walked back. We took a breather in the tent, then tried to start a fire in the fire pit. Unfortunately, neither of us had ever been camping before and had no idea how to start a fire. We had bought some of those self-lighting logs from Walmart and some lighter fluid, but... Everything else around us was soaked to the bone from the rain that had passed through the day before. We knew we needed kindling of some sort, but any dry sticks or leaves was far and few between. Eventually, we got a small fire going and ate hot dogs and marshmallows and spent some time look at the stars. Then we noticed just how dark it was out there. My girlfriend was easily spooked and was like, can we get into the tent now? So we put the fire out and crawled into the tent. We were talking to each other, but I could tell she was tense. Suddenly, she put her hand over my mouth and was like, Shh, do you hear that? Before I could respond, we heard footsteps. Like, heavy footsteps. It sounded like a group of people walking. I whispered to her, It's probably just animals or something. Then we heard mumbling, like low mumbling. We couldn't make out words but it didn't sound like a sound an animal could make. 
It sounded like words, but hushed and non-elaborated. We sat in silence, staring at each other in the dark for what felt like forever. The mumbling got louder, as did the footsteps, until it sounded like it was right outside of our tent. We both froze. I don't think either of us were breathing. And then, silence. We waited and waited and waited. I'm still not sure how much time passed. Eventually, my girlfriend said, we have to get to your car. The adrenaline was pumping, so I peeked out of the tent into the darkness and told her to stay behind me. Then we ran to the car. I locked the doors and she was like, what the fuck was that? We can't stay here. No one is out here but us. What was that? I kept looking around for any signs of life, but we were seemingly alone. I looked at her and was like, okay, I'm going to grab our stuff. You stay in the car. We only had our ice chest and our tent out. I hopped out and ran, grabbed our ice chest, tossed it into the back seat. As I turned around to go get the tent, I started hearing footsteps closing in again. In a moment of pure terror, I yanked the tent out of the ground, wrapped the tarp around it, and slung it over my shoulder like some panicked Santa Claus and shoved it into the trunk. I didn't say anything when I got in the car except... Do we have everything in here? My girlfriend said yes, and I floored it in reverse out of our camping area. Then we came to a fork in the road that went in like six different directions. I asked my girlfriend if she remembered which path we came down to get in here, and she told me she didn't know. We chose a random one and ended up in a different camping spot. I cursed it under my breath and slammed it into reverse again. Then I noticed, from the angle we had exceeded from, I could see the main path back to the gate thanks to a small sign behind an overgrown bush. As we hightailed it out of there, I noticed there was a single, small, green light out in the woods to our right, near where our designated spot was. We drove the entire five hours back to our hometown and fell asleep on my girlfriend's parents' couch at around 4 a.m. We never talked about the trip ever again and I haven't had any desire to camp since LOL. Story 27. Not my experience, but my mom's, and the reason she didn't let any of my siblings and I go camping. She had gone camping with her friends sometime in the 80s. It was the first time she had ever gone, and she didn't exactly know anything about camping. The way she tells it, her friends picked the moat isolated place in the woods that they could so they could drink, underaged without anyone coming along to check on them. After partying until about one in the morning, they decided to go down for the night. My mom woke up and had heard some noises and shook her friend awake as she was scared. Her friend just assured her it was animals and normal and to go back to sleep, so she did. The next morning they woke up to large boot prints circling around their tent and campfire. The footprints came from the woods and left in the same direction. They couldn't trace it further because of the foliage. They pack it up and left that day, even though they were supposed to be there for a week. Apparently, they weren't the only ones this happened to, and boot prints were found a number of times over the next two years. No one was ever caught doing it. Story 28. When I was in high school, my friends and I went out to a really remote spot in the mountains to camp. Just to get there, you needed a pretty serious off-roader. It was about 30 miles up a super rough road. There were river crossings, huge boulders in the road, and tons of sand pits. This road took us all day, and all day we didn't see a single other person. No one passed us. We didn't see anyone camping. Nothing. At one point, one of my friends noted, it looked like no one had even driven on the road in a while. Which was weird, because this was in Colorado, and roads trails like this are really popular. Something worth pointing out. This road led into a box canyon, which is basically nature's cul-de-sac. The road we were on was the only road in, and the only road out. All around us was massive cliffs. And another thing, we were deep in the mountains, far from any cell service. On top of that, we were in a box canyon, which even if you're next to a city, never has service. All that said, we eventually got to the spot and set up camp. Every time we went camping, we played capture the flag. 
This trip was no exception. We waited for it to get dark, then started. In the middle of the second round, me and one of my friends, on my team, hop up on the road, which ran parallel to area we were playing in. It seemed like a good way to get around to the other flag. Walking down road, we began to see a glow coming towards us. Our first thought was, it's another 444 coming towards us. But as it got closer, we realized it was a young woman holding up her phone, looking for service. She was still at a distance, but we could tell she was panicky. She was rushing and stumbling at the same time. She didn't seem drunk. It was weird. We called out, hello? No response. But it wasn't just that she ignored us. It was more like she didn't even realize we were there. We tried again. You okay? Nothing. As she's passing us, we realize she's crying. Again, you okay? She stumbles right past us, never showing a single sign that she saw us. The whole time, just looking at her phone for service. My friend and I are frozen. We watch her go, still stumbling, still crying. She rounded a turn, then disappeared. I yell out to my everyone else to meet back at camp. We do. I tell them what we saw. And I'm not proud to admit this, because it seemed like she needed help. But we got creeped out. We said we'd stay in camp that night, and in the morning we'd go looking. The first thing we do in the morning is decide there must be some other people camped down the road. They must know her. So we go down to the end of the road. There's no sign of anyone. Then we decided to go to the entrance of the road and look for the woman. So we drive to the entrance, which took all day. Nothing. I still feel guilty for not trying harder to help her. But thinking about how she got in that position, it just doesn't make sense. She didn't look like a hiker. She had on regular jeans and a sweater. If she had gotten in the canyon from the other side, it would require a very technical decent. She would have needed gear, and she didn't even have a backpack. We were pretty sure we were the only ones that had driven down that road in a while. So it's not like someone dropped her off or left her. And the whole time we saw her, she was holding up her phone looking for service. If she knew the area at all, she would know there was no way she was going to find service. I don't know what to make of it, but I do know that the image of that woman stumbling in the dark, crying, has been seared in my brain ever since. Story 29 my friend and I were in the car, ready to leave for a music festival, when we got notice it was cancelled. We were all ready to go, so we decided to just drive and find somewhere to camp for the weekend instead. We ended up in a sort of summer resort area upstate. It was the end of season, so the place was completely empty. But it was pretty, nice lake and scenery, so we figured we'd stay. There were no pesky families with kids to interfere with the partying we intended to do. The semi-creepy but friendly attendant assigned us a site, so we drove down to it. We quickly noticed they'd put us in the site that was furthest away from everything, literally on the edge of the woods, surrounded by empty sites, completely isolated. We thought it was weird, but still, it was what we wanted, to just drink and smoke in the woods in peace. So we set up camp, then fucked around until it got dark. As soon as we settled down in the tent and put out the lantern, we heard an unmistakable sound. Off to the left of us, where there was nothing but empty campsites, maybe a hundred yards away, someone was slowly and deliberately sharpening an axe or a knife against stone. Long, slow, metallic strokes. Over and over and over. My friend was terrified, but I was laughing thinking this attendant guy was obviously fucking with us city slickers. She insisted we would have heard him coming and decided to call the check-in booth. He was there. It was almost half a mile away. There's no way he could have gotten there in time, and we could still hear the sharpening sound. And the attendant guy confirmed there was no one in the place except us. We ended the night locked in the car, holding a can of bear mace. My friend fell asleep but I watched and listened all night. Shortly before sunrise, the noise stopped. 
The sun came up, and there was nobody around anywhere. Still can't explain it. Story 30 Went camping with some new friends once, and one demanded he not share a tent with anyone because he sleepwalks. After we had already made the plans that he would share a tent with one friend while my girlfriend and I would have our own, said whatever, was kind of pissed about it but left it so we could still enjoy the weekend. GF and I shared an awkward tent with basically a rando. That night, I was woken up by my GF who said, first friend's name is freaking me out. So I looked outside the tent and dude is just walking in circles. I told her he sleepwalks so we just need to keep an eye on him and make sure he doesn't do anything stupid. Like 30 sec later, he starts screaming, hello, at the top of his lungs. And that goes on for a while, just standing in the middle of the campsite screaming. At this point, we're all awake and watching him like WTF. Then he turns toward the woods, screams, hello, and points his fucking pistol into the nothingness, luckily away from us. Now, up to this point, I didn't even know he brought his gun. So I went ahead and got mine out too, because I was thinking like, shit, he is going to sleep, shoot us. But he doesn't. Instead, he put his gun down, went into his tent, and went immediately back to sleep. Next morning, I asked him what the fuck he was doing. It turned out he was not asleep, and he thought he had heard coyotes. So his first thought was to wander off by himself into the night, instead of waking any of us up. I never camped with him again. A few years later, he made the news for scaring the shit out of an entire campsite one night, because he was running through the woods and firing his gun erratically because he saw Bigfoot and was trying to track him down. Really weird guy. Story 31. Girlfriend and I were tent camping, and there were maybe only five other campers in the campground, all spread apart. Well, in the middle of the night, we both awaken because we hear footsteps maybe 20 feet from our tent. We both just lay there, dead quiet, listening to the footsteps. They were very slow and not moving around much. No other breathing sounds, and it didn't sound particularly heavy. We both thought it was a person. Weirdest part is that after about 30 seconds of that, the footsteps just stopped. Like, no trailing off into the distance, nothing. Like, they just stopped, and that was that. Still don't know how or what that was about. Story 32, the unfortunately named Meat Cove, Nova Scotia. Very remote, 20 years ago anyway. No services to speak of. One road in is the same road out. Narrow strip of land between forbidding hills and the ocean. The one campground for miles and miles around. We're tuckered out and need a place to crash. The groundskeeper at the front, this old lady who looked like the crypt keeper. She looks us straight in the eye and says, you need to leave, now. No questions asked, we nope the hell out of there. Never even got a campsite. Story 33. This past weekend I was camping with some friends and my buddy and I decided to go for a hike to scout for elk because we'll be hunting there next month when the season opens up. So we walk through the woods and eventually wind up back on a two track road. My buddy is carrying his 2YO daughter and we have a few dogs with us. Then out of nowhere we hear the crack of a rifle shot, and the very distinct sound of a bullet passing between us. We were standing about ten feet apart, thinking someone was trying to shoot my dog perhaps. She looks like a coyote. I run up the road into a clearing, screaming at whoever was shooting to stop shooting because there were people near. I see a guy standing there with a rifle looking dumber than a box of shit, so I pull my pistol out and tell him he almost shot us, and he is making a bunch of excuses, even though he's bird hunting with a rifle and not wearing blaze orange. It got pretty heated, and he threatened me before my buddy told him to calm down. Plus, we had a kid with us, and so did this guy. So, no point in escalating the situation, but the guy did tell me he'd find me in town, even though he was 100% in the wrong in this situation. Story 34 I have spent a ton of time in the wood, camping and hunting. I was camping with family, and we heard the most horrific and animalistic sound coming through the trees. It was night, and we had a lantern, 
so a small ring of light with pitch black beyond. Our dog shot straight up, hackled, and the terrifying, guttural growling and animal screaming got closer. We all braced for some monster to come spilling from the darkness, adrenaline pumping, dog fighting, to break free. Suddenly the animals burst into the light. It was two raccoons fighting. They stopped, looked at us, and kind of had the oh shit look on their faces and kind of sidled back into the darkness. To this day it is still the most terrifying experience I've had in the wood. Story 35 Drifter on the Trail Right after graduating high school, me and three friends decided to hike the Appalachian Trail from central West Pennsylvania to New Jersey. Out in the middle of Thiar Wilderness, miles from the nearest shelter, this weather-worn man with dirty shoulder-length hair comes rushing out of the brush onto the trail in front of us. His outfit was mismarched hiking gear, and up close it was clear he had seen hard times. Though he was young, his hands were scarred, skin pockmarked, and around his weighted, I kid you not, he had freaking a machete tied to his belt. So this fine gentleman introduced himself by the moniker Lone Wolf and claimed he was a lost thru-hiker hiking the AT south to north. The fact he had no pack, however, was odd. But being really stupid 18-year-olds, with that sense of invisible energy common to that age, we didn't immediately get the hell away from him. He was weirdly charming, and we were kind of amused, in a perverse way. We figured he leaves us be if we were friendly, so we offered him some cigarettes. As he's smoking it, Lone Wolf starts staring at my friend Gwen, with weird looks, and making uncomfortable conversation directed at her, and only her. So we took off pretty quick, and hoped that would be the last we'd see of him. Nope. Two hours later, we break for a rest on a tall rock, and to our shock, we see Lone Wolf, machete in tow, sneaking along in the brush next to the trail. We immediately double our pace, hoping to lose the guy, but he managed to follow us all day. With each hour, we realize beyond any doubt that he is following us, and our pace became more and more urgent. By nightfall, we lost track of the drifter, but were jumping at every snapped twig and moving shadow. Hours pass, and we don't see anyone, so we decide so build a fire. No one could sleep. Throughout the evening, we heard the periodic sound of brush and twigs breaking beyond the firelight. Half panicking, I called out to the darkness. Something is definitely moving just out of sight. Hello. The noises suddenly stopped, and I felt the sinking dread of full panic chilling my blood. I drew my utility knife, sweaty plams shaking. We've got a gun, my friend shouts, a lie. He reaches into his bag, and pulling the handle of a camping frying pan out, which in the dark looked vaguely gunike, he waved around in the firelight. There was science then rapid crunching leaves, and the more distant sound of twigs breaking. Then silence. The next day, a local ranger came up to us as we were approaching the next shelter and asked if we'd seen a man matching Lone Wolf's description. Apparently, someone had been attacked, beaten, and robbed nearby. The ranger phoned the sheriff about our story and told us they'd look for the guy. The ranger saw we were shaken and was nice enough to give us a ride up a fire trail a few miles so we could get out of the area. I still shudder think about what they guy would have done had we not scared off. Story 36 Years ago, my girlfriend and I were teachers, and in June of each year we would take a group of kids camping. We had a 12-person tent set up on our site, which was right next to a small lake. The site included a picnic table and a fire ring. Part of the trip was telling campfire stories about the Jersey Devil, since the campground was located in an area where there had been many sightings over the years. The kids enjoyed being scared and they couldn't wait to return the following year. This was around the fifth annual trip we had taken and up to that point, nothing had happened. On the last night after the stories, when the kids were safely asleep, my GF and I sat by the campfire in beach chairs. We had just bought a new puppy and she was tied to the tent on a long lead 
so she could run around. Suddenly the logs in the fire collapsed, and the light from the fire dimmed considerably. Our propane torch that was on the picnic table dimmed at the same time. It became almost pitch black, and that's when the puppy started to growl. She was right next to me, and every hair on her back was standing straight up as she stared into the darkness. Suddenly, from out of the water, comes this large figure about twenty yards from our sight. At first, I thought it was a person, but then it bent over and started running on all fours. I could only see the outline of the thing, and the back end was higher than the front. It wasn't a bear, or a dog, or a deer. It looked and ran like something I had never seen. It was in no hurry as it just trotted by and into the woods near our site. I jumped up and ran to my car and turned on the lights. The car lights lit up our campsite, but there was no sign of anything out of the ordinary. I told my GF to wake the kids because we were leaving. She was the braver one and convinced me to stay. We eventually calmed down and turned in for the night. I laid down by the tent opening